Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to the December edition of my 2017 One Month to a More Effective Compliance Program podcast series, where each month I take a deep dive into a specific part of a best practices compliance program. In the month of December, I'm taking a deep dive into better written standards, which form the very backbone of your compliance program. Written standards include codes of conduct, policies, and procedures, and we're going to be taking a very deep dive into the design of all of these training and revising and updating. We'll also take a look at the information communicated by the Department of Justice on what specific policies should be included in your best practices compliance program, including policies on gifts, travel, business entertainment, charitable donations, facilitation payments, third parties, and cybersecurity. We'll also take a look at certain enforcement actions and opinion releases to see what other information we can glean from these. My sponsor this month is my Doing Compliance Masterclass. We recently concluded the first Masterclass in November 2017. I'm co-hosting this with Jonathan Marks at Markham LLC. We will be putting on a full series of classes in 2018. Check back for details. This month's podcast series will give you information which will allow you to set up the very foundation of your compliance program. My podcast series on one month to a more effective compliance program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Day 15, Policies on Political Donations. The FCPA states, quote, the FCPA's anti-bribery provisions apply to corrupt payments made to any foreign official, any foreign political party or official thereof, and any, any candidate for foreign political office, or for any person while knowing that all or a portion of the payment will be offered, given, or promised to an individual falling, falling within one of these three categories. Although the statute distinguishes between a foreign official, a foreign political party or official thereof, and candidate for foreign public, foreign political office, the term foreign official in the FCPA generally refers to an individual falling within any of these three categories. Yet, everyone understands that government policies affect a commercial business environment. Your company will be subject to litigation and regulation that affects how it conducts business in every country it does business in and how it generates value for its investors. Participation in the political process is a part of a business strategy to protect a company's interests. Most international businesses have a strategy to engage in political processes with a view to long-term interests of the company and to promote and protect their own interests. All political contributions and expenditures on behalf of the company need to be recorded and documented throughout. No political contribution should be made or promised on a company's behalf unless there's written pre-approval. So what are some of the things that can influence a candidate the company might want to financially support? Well, here, candidate support for key company business and public policy priorities, candidate's voting record and leadership strength, candidate's commitment to the company's industry growth and ability to positively impact its goal, and company assets or employees in a region that are represented by the candidate. All political contributions should be made in accordance with the applicable laws and regulations that are required by law. Any request for contribution to a political candidate, committee, or party should be addressed to a corporate compliance function and should include an analysis of the four factors that I discussed, as well as the business justification for the request to support the particular candidate, committee, or party. No contribution should be made on the company's behalf, once again, unless pre-approved in writing. And here I would generally add pre-approved by both compliance and whatever your company might call its government affairs department. The government affairs department is really your first line of defense of 
obtaining the necessary information, including the business justification and the written justification using these three, four, excuse me, four points I articulated. And also it's another way for you to operationalize or more fully operationalize your compliance program because you're pushing down this issue of political donations directly to the business unit most closely involved. So what are some of the specific things you should ask for information-wise? Well, the name of the candidate, committee, or political party, the government agencies with, with which the candidate is or has been affiliated. So for instance, has the candidate served in a particular ministry and in what period of time? The candidate's position on key issues that affect a company's business, such as human rights, labor, equality, unionization, taxes, et cetera. The candidate's voting record on issues that affect the company. Whether the company does business with a government entity with which the candidate is seeking a position and the amount of business in the preceding 12 months, excuse me, 24 months and anticipated business going forward. Any pending or recently awarded contracts with a government entity with which the company, excuse me, the candidate is affiliated or is seeking a position. Any pending or recently awarded contracts overseen or managed by the committee, party, or political entity for which the political contribution is sought. And once again, the business justification for making the political contribution. Your company policy should Prohibit politically exposed persons from exerting pressure or undue influence over your employees, agents, consultants, and representatives to make political contributions. Once again, you should prohibit use of your company's resources, including work time, vehicles, transportation, other resources to support candidates or campaigns personally. In the course of employment, politically exposed persons should be prohibited from engaging on any activity on a company's behalf that is intended to influence legislation, rulemaking, or government policy without pre-authorization of your compliance function. Finally, political contributions should not be used to disguise a payment that is prohibited under your code of conduct, your anti-corruption policy, or other policies and procedures. If your company's policies prohibit the, payment in, prohibit the payment in another form, it should not be made under the guise of a political contribution. No employee should utilize third parties or their own personal funds to make a payment that cannot be made under your own policies and procedures regarding political contributions. Finally, uh, if there is a management override, it should only be approved by the uh, chief compliance officer your Compliance Oversight Committee, and or the Board of Directors. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, first of all, never forget that political candidates are covered by the FCPA. This means that uh, all your rules and regulations kick in for them. Two, what is the business purpose for the contributions? The business justification is key in a lot of different areas under the FCPA, and it's the same under political donations. And number three, Finally, do not make contributions towards candidates who can award you business over uh, 12 to 24 months. It just looks bad, smells bad, and it is bad. This is Tom Fox. I hope you've enjoyed day 15 of one month to better written standards, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow for day 16. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of One Month to Better Written Standards in a Compliance Program. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for another episode. If you have listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would ask that you would rate our podcast as it would help in our rankings and also help get the word out about the only daily podcast, which will give you a hint or tip to improve your compliance program. Also, if you have any questions, you can email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. This is Tom Fox. Thank you again for listening. I hope you'll join me tomorrow. My podcast series of one month to a better compliance program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.